Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how I converted this really ugly section of my backyard into super usable space. I did all of the work myself and it actually ended up taking about four months of weekends to do instead of the expected four to six weeks and I completely blew my budget. But I absolutely love the way it turned out. I took video of every second that I worked on this and I've condensed it into the next few minutes. So if you want to see how it all came together and pick up some of my lessons learned and also hear how the time and money budget got completely destroyed, keep watching. Before we get into this, I'll say the inspiration for this whole things started with this wall that my son and I built because the large rocks on the side of the house were perpetually sliding down the hill into the pea gravel. I guess I realized what a waste of space this area was at that point and decided to make a change. Okay, I want to give a quick overview of the project first. This is going to be a six part project and this is kind of why I thought this might take up to six weekends to complete. So here's the step by step tour before I bust into the super speed mode on the video. Uh, so step one is I need to reroute this sump pump outlet. It goes into the gravel about three feet from the foundation. So it never really clears the water from around the house. It just keeps recycling it in place. So uh, I need to get that out onto the grass. And then also, I really don't want this thing dumping water or pumping water under my furniture uh, in the sitting area. Step two, as you'll see, I'm super critical about making sure everything is level. And right now the pea gravel is quite a bit higher on the left side from this view, sloping down to the right. So I've got some fill dirt that I'm going to put under the right side. And I'm also going to move that border between the different rocks over to the left and build a nice wall between them instead of the annoying metal strip that's there now. Step three, because this was just an unused area before, I put a compost pile here a while ago. I'm gonna to need to relocate that. I've got a couple of options. I'll probably just stash that closer uh, to my garden where it would be more convenient anyway. Okay, uh, next up, step four, I need to remove two stumps. I already re removed one a couple weeks ago with an ax. I'll use the same technique here, which I call stump removal by brute force. I created a separate video on that and I'll put a link to it in the description because in this video, I'm gonna blow through that uh, stump removal process in about 30 seconds. Step five is gonna be grabbing the extra flagstone uh, from an old path that I tore up about 10 or 15 years ago into this new area and arrange it somewhat decoratively and also to use it to keep uh, the furniture from sinking into the pea gravel. And finally, step six, I do wanna make this a nice place to sit at night uh, with some patio lights, so I'll be hanging those too. My original intent was to put some posts in the ground to hang those, but as you'll see, I found a faster and easier way to take care of this. I'll tell you right away, I screwed up with where I started. I started on this reroute of the sump outlet, but I should have started with ordering the furniture. Uh, waiting for the furniture eventually led to a two month delay in the completion of this project. So lesson number one, order your furniture first. All right, so here we go with the sump reroute. The main thing I wanted to be careful of here was to make sure that I had a downward slope in the pipe as it left uh, the area of the house. I don't think that the water ever freezes here when it's actively pumping, but you just wanna make sure that you don't end up with standing water in the pipe, which could then freeze. Uh, so it's it gotta all drain out. So my plan was to route the pipe under the two landscaping timbers uh, in the front, but of course I found a third one buried there. So I had to drill through it. This is where it got somewhat comedic because it rained really hard during much of this part and working on an actively pumping system was not fun and I flooded my work area several times. All the rain did give me some insight into how the water flows and where it tended to gather. Uh, so I got to kind of test this in real time, which was nice because I didn't want to have to dig this up and fix it uh, after I was all done. Since I'm going to have an upward elbow at the grass end, I made sure I left some gaps between that elbow and the pipe so it could drain out of the elbow. And I also drilled some holes in the pipe near the grass so that any water that might possibly remain at the far end of that pipe could drain out into the gravel area. I'll add here that under those holes in the pipe, I dug a small pit and filled it with larger stones because the soil here is really just clay. So drilling holes into the pipe wouldn't actually result in much drainage out of the pipe. I completed that and just left it in an unfinished state really while I took on the next step in case I had to come back and fix something. Moving the compost bin was pretty straightforward, just a matter of getting all of the old leaves and grass clippings out and removing the wire fence I used uh, as a container and moving it under my deck. That all went pretty smoothly. I was careful to remove about three inches of nice black soil that had been created over the last couple of years from the compost and I added that to my garden and then uh, put some weed barrier down underneath where the compost bin used to be to prevent anything uh, from growing up through the rocks there. And I'll make a note here before I move on to the next step that you might see a green flag that I have in the ground right there where the compost pile was. Uh, it marks a spot where I found a vertical access uh, to my sprinkler system. And I wanted to make sure I didn't damage that or lose it because uh, through this process, I decided I'd use it later. 
Okay, the stump removal. Like I said before, I created a more lengthy how-to on the stump removal with an ax, so I'm not going to dwell on this step. It did take a long time. I'll put a link to that uh, video in the description. I will say I had a couple more lessons learned here, uh, both of which should be pretty obvious, but uh, I guess lesson learned number two was use a sharp ax. I broke my ax partway through this process of uh, taking out three stumps and I just went and got a new ax that was sharp and it was a lot easier. It went a lot more quickly uh, with that sharp ax. And then lesson number three, and I guess this is another obvious one, is cutting a wet stump with an ax is uh, really difficult, if not impossible. I didn't have much of a choice because we just hit a really rainy weather pattern and I had to get this done. At one point I was literally hacking away at the stump while it was in standing water. Uh, wet wood is really a bear to cut with hand tools. Okay, so let the leveling begin. So I'm going to cut out about an hour of me just staring at this area. It's actually pretty funny in time lapse. It's just me crossing my arms, staring at this project from different angles, trying to determine how to level this all out. And I had a problem in that uh, from the wood landscaping timbers back to that block wall next to the house, there was an upward slope. And if I were to make it level from the timbers, I would end up digging below the grade of the wall and I didn't want to have to build that wall again. So my solution ended up being adding a single layer of blocks that allowed me to step down the pea gravel instead of sloping it. The last part of the leveling uh, was to build another wall that would allow a large step down from the pea gravel to the larger rocks. I ended up building this twice because the first time I didn't put a curve in it and it ended up not being an exact number of blocks in length. So it was like two thirds of a block left at the end and I wanted it to end in a whole block. So I redid it with a slight curve so it would take an additional third of a block and uh, make it a whole number. So lesson number four here, obvious again, roughly lay out the blocks before doing all of the leveling uh, in case it doesn't fit the way you wanted it to. Uh, I ended up redoing a lot of work there. I took a break from the wall building for a few hours to go back to that sprinkler pipe and the terrace that I created. Uh, we'll call this step five. I decided to extend that pipe over next to those terracing blocks and I put a six port drip manifold on the end. I then attached three drip lines to that and fed that into three petunia planters that I bought at, at uh, Home Depot. Now, getting back to the wall, I will also say uh, that finally on this wall, I decided to use the right tool uh, for splitting the blocks in half for the ends. I previously was using a sturdy wood chisel and I decided to use a masonry chisel for this and it was night and day. The masonry chisel just split the block right in half really easily. I have a couple blocks left over. I think I might do a comparison video to see how much faster the masonry chisel was. So a couple lessons learned here. Uh, lesson number five uh, in this whole project is, I'm not sure why I didn't think about this, but if you have a whole number of blocks in one row on a wall and it's only gonna be two rows high, since the next and last row is going to be offset by half a brick, it's gonna leave a half a brick on each end. That half a brick row shouldn't be your top row. I should have made that the bottom row so that at the top, uh, the visible row would be just all whole bricks. And lesson number six, as I said, use a masonry chisel when you're um, chopping these blocks or splitting the blocks. Uh, not any ordinary chisel uh, works like a masonry chisel. Now I just needed to move as much of the pea gravel as I could from the right side from this angle to the left, uh, put down some weed barrier, and then uh, put the bigger gravel on top. Um, I have that stuff all over, so I just uh, stole some from around the side of the house uh, to put here. Step number six, I thought I was just going to lay out and level the flagstones and then wait for the furniture, but I quickly realized that I should wait until I have the furniture so I can make sure I have a stone centered on each foot of the furniture. So now I just waited. It took uh, like eight weeks to get the furniture, partly because it went on a better sale while I was waiting for it. So I canceled my order and reordered at the lower price. So lesson number seven, of course, never pay full price on Wayfair because they're always having sales. And even after you order it, if it's on back order and you're flexible, consider canceling a previous order uh, and repurchasing at a better price. In this case, that move saved me $500. And now it became a waiting game. I took a break and did some camping, fishing, disc golf, did some jeeping, gambling, drank some margaritas, enjoyed the 4th of July parade. 
All right, the furniture arrived. I arranged it exactly how I wanted it, and then I put flags down where the legs were, and then uh, put a stone where each flag was and leveled it uh, so that I had a stone leveled under each leg. Um, I will say that the furniture is where I completely blew this budget. Uh, my initial plan was to just build some simple benches for like 50 bucks, but then my wife uh, heard about what I was doing and essentially threatened my life or at least my happiness. Uh, and I ended up buying uh, pretty expensive furniture. I will admit it is a lot better than my bad wooden bench idea. For the finishing touches, uh, to make this a cool place to sit at night, I definitely needed some lights. I don't have any outlets handy, so I bought some solar patio lights. Uh, these also have a cord charging option, so I should be able to hook up a portable power pack if I needed a non-solar boost. Uh, during the cleanup around the house, I found an eight foot long one by two that I just painted uh, the same color as the uh, fence. And I screwed it into our fence and then strung the lights from the deck to the house to that piece of wood. And then finally I bought an outdoor storage box, mostly for putting the covers in when we're sitting out there, but I'm also storing extra cushion covers and other miscellaneous things that uh, go with this project. And that was it. So with some of the reuse of stuff I had laying around the house, the total cost was about $3,600. And it did take the better part of uh, summer weekends. Could have been done in about six weeks, probably on, on weekends if I did it right. But I think it's super cool. I certainly saved a lot of money doing it myself. Uh, if you like how it turned out or if it gave you any ideas, uh, leave me a like and let me know uh, in the comments.